Hey, well, welcome to your weekly wisdom. I'm gonna give you a challenge today from the book of Proverbs and also from the New Testament that some of you aren't gonna like. So brace yourself. And here it is. Pray for people in roles of leadership, including local, national, and global leaders. Pray for them. Why do I say that? Because in the Bible, Old and New Testament, we're reminded that God's on the throne And people in roles of leadership should be prayed for. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But listen to this passage. This is from Proverbs chapter 8, beginning of verse 15. God says in his word, By me kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me princes govern, and nobles, and all those who rule the earth. There's a sense that God's hand is, is on the steering wheel of history, even when it doesn't look like that. I don't think this, that this means that every single leader in any place in the world is, is honoring God, but it does remind us that God's on the throne over all. And now listen to these words, uh, and, and these words are from the New Testament, and these words have, have a different ring to them, but they're, they're pretty strong. We read these words. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, and then the next verse, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This isn't saying that we should say, God, thank you for every leader. It isn't even saying that we agree with what they believe or what they do. But we should pray for them that the things that they decide, the way that they lead, the policies they put into play would allow us to lead peaceful, quiet lives. That their behavior wouldn't disrupt the peace that God wants to bring into our lives. So in a sense, sometimes we're praying for people in roles of leadership. Sometimes we're praying that God would change them, that God would convict them, that God would challenge them. We could even pray that God would remove them. But as long as they're in leadership, we should pray for them. We should lift them up and pray that they would make wiser choices, that they would do things that are less disruptive, and that ultimately that we could live lives filled with peace and quietness and follow and honor Jesus. Some of you pray for local leaders, for state leaders, for national leaders, for global leaders regularly. Some of you as Christians have never done that, and especially not for those that you disagree with. So here's my challenge today. Recognize that God's on the throne and praise Him for that. Realize that people in roles of leadership need your prayers when you agree with their policies and when you don't. So today, pause, slow down and pray for those that are in roles of leadership, that they would lead in such a way that the world would be a better place and we could live peace-filled lives. Will you join me in prayer? Living God, we tend to want to pray for those who we agree with, but you don't give us that option in your word. You remind us that you're on the throne and that we should pray for those in roles of leadership even when we don't agree with them. So Lord, help us to do that. Help us do that regularly, consistently with wisdom, with precision in our prayers. Sometimes we pray for them to change. Sometimes we pray for your blessing. But Lord, we want to pray that that how people lead will allow the world to be a place where people, others can live and walk in peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, blessings on you. If you're part of Shoreline Church, we will see you online or on campus at 9 and 11 this coming Sunday. If you're part of another church, be an active part of the body of Christ wherever God's put you. Blessings and have a great day.